That's better. That's better. Is that on? It is That's on. on. Hello there, it's Boots Owen here. Now then. I'm here with Andy Reynolds. Andy has a channel on YouTube as well where he explores things in a bit more of a sustainable way, perhaps, than destroying washing machines. But as you know from my channel, it's not just about destroying washing machines. We only destroy them when we can't fix them. We always attempt to fix them, we attempt to find out what's wrong with them. We do other things as well. But I'm here chatting to Andy about a sustainable way of doing laundry. Andy has an abundance of solar panels and the capacity to generate wind energy and a storage bank full of batteries to keep that energy and an abundance of washing machines. So he's the <laughs> ideal person to talk to about this topic. Andy, tell me a little bit about solar panels first of all and where the electricity comes from that you burn okay. or that you use you rather use. than burn. Yeah. Well, when I teach this, one of the basic things I always say to people is there's no such thing as too many solar panels, okay? There is such thing as too many washing machines, but there's no such thing as too many solar panels because... Perhaps, perhaps we'll have a look at how many washing machines is right over on your channel. Uh, well, that's a good idea, yeah, because okay. there's a whole theory about that, and I've been struggled with it for years, yeah? yeah? And yeah, where is, the, where is the edge of your eccentricity? I'm not quite sure, but I mean, basically, we've got quite a lot of solar panels, and they're brilliant because you face the sun, and electricity pours out of them, right? And we have a huge battery bank, about 1,200 amp hours at 48 volts. Now that won't mean a lot to lots of people, but it's a huge amount. There's there's 20 amp hours to the kilowatt. So you can get your calculator out and work that. So it's a sunny day, yeah. We're on the washing machine. The washing machine is running from the inverter and the batteries and the solar panels. So there's theoretically, apart from if you wanted to get into the finer detail, the embedded energy and embedded carbon in the panels and the batteries, but all the batteries are reclaimed, forklift batteries. So sunny day. The washing machine's going, we're drawing no electricity out of the grid. So that's that's the way I look at it. That's a success then. It is. It is. And you know, somebody like yourself, you could put four panels up yep. on the shed, facing south, yeah, without any trees in the way, and you could engineer that so that the output of that would help to run your washing machine. And then when the washing machine switches off, the output of that can help to run the fridge and the freezer yeah. and all the little plugins and stuff like that. So, and it's this whole thing about sort of taking responsibility for the carbon that you are emitting or consuming. Yeah? And if you can do a little bit, and the thing about solar panels is, it is it's not for today, but it's for the next 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and who can tell where the values and and um, inflation and all that sort of thing, where will it go? Yeah. Electricity prices will only go up. So you invest a bit now in in solar and and it makes a contribution to your to your uh, household and it cuts your bill down. But it does the same and the same and the same. Yeah. Yeah. So my view is only run the washing machine when it's a sunny day. And what, then what I'm interested in as well is it's a standard washing machine. Yeah. It's not a 12 volt anything or anything like that. It's just a straightforward mains electricity washing machine. Are you doing anything differently about how you're running it? So for me, a washing machine has two things that use electricity. It has a motor to agitate and spin the load and it has an element to heat the water. Yeah. The element in a washing machine is typically two kilowatts, which is roughly about what you're generating at a peak, I think, from my quick calculation in my head of your sums on a sunny day. Um, 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 or am I out by a factor of... Three. <laughs> okay, I'm out by a factor of three, that's yes. a bizarre one. Okay, nevertheless, you, so you have ample electricity to yes. run the element, so there's no need to change anything. You can run it on whatever setting you want right. for as long as the sun is shining, or not, if the batteries are there to, to put it out. Exactly. Um, I mean, one of the simplest way is to fill it with hot water. Yep. If yeah. the hot water's coming in, then it's it's um, 
It's already heated. That's because that's it's already what, heated. That's, so what, that's what we do at home. So yeah. when we draw, that's why I we've spoken about what type of washing machines I like in that other video. But um, a Bosch WFF has a hot and a cold fill. And from my point of view, if you can take in hot water that's heated by gas, it's both cheaper and potentially greener or less green to heat the water with gas than electricity, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, and because a lot of modern washing machines, they don't do that yeah. because they can't regulate the temperature of the water. Yeah. So how does the WF regulate it? It, ju it measures the temperature that, that's in. If it's over a certain temperature, it will stop heating it. So if it comes in, if you get the water into it at 90, yeah. and it needs to be on 60, it won't turn on the element at all. But if you bring in the water and the water's at 40 degrees and it's on a 60 wash, it'll run the element for a shorter time than if the water were cold until it comes up to temperature. So your average immersion heater, well, ours is set about 50 degrees. Okay. So it would just flood in and uh, if, it, if you wanted a 40 wash, it would just wait, will it? Or will it uh, add some cold? I don't think it adds cold. I think it draws in hot. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure about that. And I suspect that changes with the machines now. I haven't, Probably thought, does. I haven't thought about that. The issue I've had is when I've been running a cold only fill machine on yeah. hot water, which is a trick I, I can do in the cellar. Yeah. You end up spinning on hot water if you forget to switch it back to cold. <laughs> and that's, that is a waste of energy, yes. but it's probably bad for the laundry as well. It probably doesn't clean the soap off as effectively as Does cold water. Does it not? I don't know. No. But I have a feeling cold yeah. water is meant to be better for removing soap. Do you know, I've never thought about that. Yeah, and rinse, that's rinse a whole it. different little sort of rabbit hole to go down, isn't it? Well, rinsing dishes in cold water rather than hot is meant to be better for cutting off the soap. Not sure, that right? that's yeah. what I've heard. So I won't, I won't pretend I've done my research. Right. It's, it's anecdotal yeah. and you could take it or leave it. So you heard it here first. So what can we think then if somebody hasn't got a solar panel, can they do anything more effectively? Um, can they do anything more efficiently? And one thing Andy was saying was spin at a slower speed. And that might be perhaps the first step. There's a point of wa washing at a lower temperature, which yeah. will obviously use less energy. Spin at a lower speed. Um, Andy dries his laundry in the wind, and the wind is potentially infinite, as long as the world keeps spinning. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't wring it out of the machine, if you don't wring the water out of the laundry in the machine, it'll come out in the wind later on, and you'll save your bearings, you'll save your motor, you'll run everything a little bit longer in that case. Yeah, and something that I would have said years ago, because it was not quite so obvious, but it is now, change your energy supplier from the big six to something, to one of these companies that guarantees 100% renewable electricity. Yeah. That's, like we've good done, energy. We've, we've, we've done that. I can't know who we're with. Yeah. I'm not going to recommend anyone anyways. Right. But that was a decision that we made and the last time we changed. But even, but even if you're with a good energy company, it's still worth checking every year. When your tariff ends, I think. Just, yeah. just to make sure, because there's a lot of good, if you're with a good energy company, but there's a lot of green energy companies now, some of them better than others. I agree with you, and it really is down to sort of can they actually guarantee that it is 100% renewable? Yeah. Yeah, because the thing there is people go, yeah, but it's electricity out the socket, right? How can you tell if that's dirty or clean? And it's not really to do with that. It's where the profits go. Yeah? So you know, if you're buying 100% renewable, then the profits are going into that industry. If you're buying 100% filthy, then the profits are going into other filthy um, industries. And that reminds me of something you said, I think, uh, presumably in a video, Andy, was to do things, and I guess to make decisions, to do them with a heart. Oh, yes. And if you do that, you, you, you can live with yourself, I think, is the simpler way of looking at it. I agree with you, you know. I mean, don't always just go for the, the lowest common denominator. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Have some respect for the environment around you, the people around you. Um, I mean, some people are only focused on money only. Uh, and whatever you say to them will have no effect. But, you know, the more people that have um, a moral compass, yeah, yeah, the better off. I think we'll leave it there. Grand. I've enjoyed it. Cheers for now.
Thanks for watching. See you later.